Hallman Chamber Foundation Young Entrepreneurs Academy Investor Panel event. We are all in for a very exciting evening. Shortly, four young and aspiring entrepreneurs will take the stage to pitch their ideas, their plans, and their passions. I am Gail Croft, Executive Director of the South Baldwin Chamber Foundation. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you to tonight's event presented by Ascend Performance Materials and Riviera Utilities. The South Baldwin Chamber of Commerce and Chamber Foundation firmly believe developing the entrepreneurial spirit in our local young people is critical for our community and country to prosper, and that is at the core of our very mission. We are proud to say we were the first chamber in the state of Alabama to adopt the program for our community. Students began the year-long program in November and meet weekly and sometimes more at Vulcan Incorporated. Students work through the process of selecting an idea, developing a business plan, including financing strategies, marketing plans, selling, and general operations. The students pitch to potential investors tonight, obtain funding, and then launch their very own companies. There are several people we would like to recognize and thank for the support of YAY in our community for the 2015-16 academic year. As the course instructor, Rick Miller's primary responsibility is to arm the students with the knowledge and skills necessary to help them become successful entrepreneurs. Rick has taught the students the fundamentals of business, finance, marketing, sales, and e-commerce. He has also helped them understand the importance of teamwork, planning, goal setting, and follow through, skills our students will carry with them for the rest of their lives. A Harvard MBA and University of Alabama graduate, Rick has over 30 years experience working in both public and private companies in financial, operational, and administrative roles. Rick has been a true mentor to our students. Please join me in giving Rick a round of applause. University and Publix. Finally, and most importantly, 
We would like to thank the organizations that sponsored YAY. And these, um, all of these companies have supported us from the beginning. So it's not just this year. They are um, rooted in everything that we have done. I always get emotional, y'all. This is a big deal for me. <laughs> um, so we thank them for their generous support that allowed us to implement YAY and directly transform local students into real business owners and entrepreneurs. Please help me show our gratitude to Riviera Utilities, Ascend Performance Materials, Meyer Vacation Rentals, Columbia Southern University, Global Marketing Solutions, Vulcan Incorporated, Edward Jones Reed Hawkins, UTC Aerospace Systems, Walmart, Francis Hall Insurance Company Incorporated, State Farm, Extra Space Storage, and Dennis Aluminum Products. Each sponsoring organization who has a representative on the investor panel this evening will be introduced momentarily. started. Um, tonight's Master of Ceremonies is Donna Watts, President and CEO of the South Baldwin Chamber and the Chamber Foundation. <coughs> Donna is passionate about the EA program and the impact it has on the lives of these students, their future, and the community. A leader with great vision and integrity, Donna models the behaviors needed to succeed every day. Her humility and generous heart are evident in all she does, and this program would not be possible without her. Please help me welcome Donna Watts. Good evening, everybody. I'm so glad to be here. I hope y'all are excited as we are. I know y'all are. <laughs> and all the moms and daddies are. We are tickled to death to get to this point with you. Gosh, you've worked hard, haven't you? I know it's been, it, I know at times you probably felt like giving up, but you haven't. And aren't you proud tonight you did? That's the way it always is. When you see it through, when you get to the end, oh, that sense of accomplishment and pride that you have. Remember that and hold on to it as you move forward. Because it will keep that flame going for a very long time. I'm glad all of y'all are here tonight to help witness this. <laughs> All the roles that you've all played, I look around the room and I, I see so many faces that I know have worked hard and uh, cared about this and put your time and energy into it. And I thank you very much for that. Uh, these young people thank you. And I'm sure over the years, before long, some of you will be getting cards from them saying, wow, how much I learned and how much it has helped me. Because you know what? If nothing else, this will teach you how to help another business that you work for succeed. Because you'll understand what that business person had to do to make it. I hope that business person is you. But no matter what, the foundation that you've learned in going through this program will, will be tremendous in your future success. I just know it will. Okay, so my job tonight is not to rattle on, but to uh, get to introducing our panel. And I wanted to point, Gail, I should have talked to you more today before we did this, but I wanted to thank Rick. And I think it's fantastic not only that he's been the instructor since the get-go, <laughs> he is now a chamber employee, <laughs> which I never imagined would happen. <laughs> and I'm very proud about that. And Gail, um, Thank you for all you've done, for your care, for the way, you, for your passion, and for the way you care about everything you do that's connected with the foundation. Uh, thanks to the sponsors, we couldn't do it without you. Literally, we couldn't do it without you. And I wanna thank Tommy Lee and Balkan for the use of your facility every week. That is such a beautiful facility, and it's so appropriate to do what we have to do. So thank you. All right, let's get started. Uh, Francis Hope Jones is uh, president of Francis Hope Insurance Company. She is um, 
Hey, let's see, wait a minute. <laughs> I was afraid I was gonna mess that up, Francis. Uh, she is a lifelong resident of, um, of Foley and a fourth generation State Farm agent in the county. Uh, she's active, of course, in our community, volunteering on numerous boards and philanthropic organizations. I found this very interesting. Francis, and I didn't know this, Francis is uh, a leading State Farm agent, ranking in the top 1% for production among 18,000 fellow agents throughout the country. She is dedicated to helping our local youth. In fact, she has served over 16 years as president of the Jennifer Claire Moore Foundation, which supports the Peer Helpful Program in over 47 local elementary, middle, and high schools. She's actively involved in the promotion of teen driver safety, which is very important. And Francis is married to Carl Jones. And they have four children, Grayson Moore, Carl Jones II, Lee Jones, and the late Jennifer Moore. Now, Tommy Lee with Vulcan. Tommy uh, is CEO of, of Vulcan and has been employed by Vulcan since um, excuse me, an aluminum manufacturing company in Foley since 1995. And um, prior to joining Vulcan, he was employed by Alabama Power Company as, as a commercial sales engineer. Tommy moved his family from Birmingham to Foley in 1968 and has called South Alabama home since then. He graduated from Foley High School and received his BS degree in, engine, in industrial engineering from Auburn. He and his wife, Sandra, live in Gulf Shores. Together they have three children, David, Anna, and Marcus. Tommy has been active in, local com in, the, in the local community, state and on national level since graduating from college. He is the former chairman of the board of the South Baldwin Chamber of Commerce and the past winner of the Walton M. Vines Free Enterprise Person of the Year. Francis holds that distinction as well. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't in your bio. <laughs> Oh. <coughs> this year he is chairman of the Business Council of Alabama. I don't know how many of you know about the Business Council of Alabama, but it is the largest um, business organization um, that represents business and advocates for business in the entire state. We're very proud to have Tommy City at the head of that organization. Um, okay, I'm going, I'm going to skip through some of this. He's also active in his church, St. Andrew by the Sea, a community church. And for Tom, for fun, Tommy enjoys cheering for his beloved Auburn Tigers. Glory. 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 <laughs> Playing golf, exploring new travel destinations, and spending time with his family. April Boone, other than the fact that she's just one of our favorite folks. April is the president and CEO of Global Marketing Solutions. In 2015, South Baldwin Chamber, uh, she was named the South Baldwin Chamber Small Business of the Year. April found, founded GMS as a one woman and one man show. She and her husband, John, took on their first client out of Jamaica, and thus Global Marketing Solutions was born. There was 11 years, that was 11 years ago, and today the full service marketing firm has grown to include more than 30 team members fulfilling services including website design, mobile app programming, content marketing, um, reputation management, and video and photography services. April calls Foley home, but she's a native of the world, a self-proclaimed army brat. She has lived in Germany, Korea, and almost a dozen states in the U.S. In her spare time, April enjoys a balcony with a beach view, don't we all? A good book and visiting with friends and family. And unfortunately, Anthony Kaiser was not able to be here with us uh, tonight. He had to be in Montgomery trying to straighten out stuff up there. So. <laughs> we will miss him and wish him very good luck. All right, so are we ready to get started? We have a special surprise. Yay! <laughs> Glad it's something. <laughs> we have a special surprise for you all tonight. Our two, our two students returned um, from the program last year. 
um, and they want to take a few minutes to share with you how the Yay experience impacted their lives and what they're up to now. Come on up, Brittany and Braswell. Let's give them a minute. I was in the YAY program last year, and I, I gained so much experience out of it. After completing the Young Entrepreneur Academy, I went on to take first place in the University of South Alabama's Coastal Ideas Challenge, securing an extra $3,500 in funding for my business. I also mentored students at the Alabama School of Math and Science uh, summer camp chart teaching class, and I ended the year off strong with my participation in the Shrimp Festival, Oyster Cook-Off, and Merry Market, enabling me to reach my first your goal of selling over $15,000 in product. This weekend, I will be participating in the Crawfish and Zydeco Festival, and also in May, the Bloom Festival. My school recently hosted a pro program called Dolphin Tank. It's an eighth grade group project. I was able to take what I learned in the A program and apply it to this project. Our group took first place for a crowdfunded Kickstarter to purchase the first ever community turtle as a part of the Turtle Tracks program. I'm pleased to announce that as of Sunday, we have launched this Kickstarter campaign. My involvement in the YAY program didn't end after graduation last year. I placed second nationally in the hashtag because of YAY social media campaign, social media contest. This year, I have enjoyed participating in the program, offering advice, creating 3D printed prototypes, and sharing my experiences with the current students. If there's one thing that I learned that I would like to pass on to current years, the current year students, is that this is not the end. It is the beginning. Regardless of how the outcome, regardless of the outcome with these investors today, you have the ability to make your business amazing and succeed. Amazing and successful. Thank you. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. Um, if you guys don't know me, I'm Brittany Hall. Last year I competed and I was shaking in my sparkly heels of last year. So I had to bring them back this year. And my company was VH Cupcakes. Our motive was to just have a whole cupcakes group. I wanted to also have a pastry business and do my cupcake truck on the go. That was my, that still is my dream. Right now, I'm currently at Troy University and I just declared my major today with business administration with the focus of human resources. So VH Cupcakes is kind of on a pause. I still accept small orders, which I left my business card and my rent card in the back. Prefer email because I'm a busy woman. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, I'm just focusing on school. Me and my mom, we still play play around in the kitchen. The other day, we made apple turnovers when I came to Sar. They were delicious. And I just plan on keep on kicking in in school. I did join Appalachia Delta, which is an honor society for freshmen this year. And I just plan on to keep kicking it, keep on rolling with punches to ask questions after each student presents. In consideration of time, only three questions will be allowed. If you have a question, please raise your hand to be recognized, um, and you can ask your question at that time. Following the last presentation, there will be a short intermission to allow the investor panel time to deliberate and make their final decisions. A total of $2,500 has been designated to invest in the businesses being presented this evening. Investors may choose to award the entire amount requested, a portion of the amount requested, more than the amount requested, or they may also choose not to award any amount. In addition to investing in the gay business ideas, the investor panel will select one student as a Saunders Scholars semifinalist. The semifinalist and one chaperone will receive an all-expenses-paid trip to Rochester, New York, May 4th through 7th, 
to pitch their business idea for, scholars, for college scholarships ranging from twenty to $30,000. The panel will also select a runner-up should the winner not be able to participate. Investments will be made based on the merit of idea and the presentation. Our young entrepreneurs understand this is a business decision. Following deliberation, investors will be led back into the auditorium and the awards will be announced by Francis Hope Jones. Time to begin with the student presentations. Our first presentation is Kayla Yeldell. Kayla Yeldell is the CEO of Kayla's Curls. Kayla is a happy, free-spirited young entrepreneur. She is originally from Birmingham and is homeschooled through Everest Academy. She is currently in the eighth grade. Kayla loves animals and enjoys horseback riding, drawing, and hanging out with her friends. Kayla's future plans are to continue to grow her company into a national brand. She also hopes to start a nonprofit and open an animal sanctuary for abused and neglected animals. Thank you. 
increased sales in March 2016. We expect sales to continue to go up each month, especially during the summer and winter months. Listed are my monthly fixed costs, which include web hosting and insurance costs per month. For this presentation, there are no variable costs at this time because there, there are one time start fees included for my startup costs for this program. My current total operating cost per month is $55. This chart shows Kale's total selling an average of 42 units per month, and our net monthly profit would be $249.06. In a year, I project selling 500 units with a net profit of $2,988.75. To start off my business, I would need $2,082. This includes the purchase of design materials, BBA, YEA, trade show, and the first production and other important costs, which the slide shows. I have $250 in the bank. I also have $100 being contributed from friends and family, bringing that total to $350. I am asking the investors for $1,732. I have rave reviews from our early customers. Check out our review. Young 
entrepreneurs, Erin Batwell. Erin is the CEO of Sugar Spice and Everything Nice. She is a hardworking girl and tries hard to reach her goals. She also participates in many school events, including archery, student government, TSA, and FEC. She is 13 years old and is very interested in fashion as much as her dolls. She will truly intrigue you with her amazing doll clothes and fashion sense.
Mayor, about how long does it take you to um, to design and then to sew the outfit? One to two hours. Two hours? Okay. That's from starting with just the pattern and going forward? It's fast. Sure. Um, you mentioned that the doll is an 18 inch doll. I don't know a lot about dolls, so I'll, I'll, I'll be straight up front. Um, and again, same question that I asked Kayla. You, you list a threat as a growing trend of other size dolls. So, since I don't understand, um, if the doll was 15 inches, could you not make a 15 inch dress for that? I mean, or are, are you set up for production just for 18 inches? also and offer something new on the website.
my product description is cleats is a step into shoe sole that converts cleats into sneakers. And we are still working on the membrane and heat option. I have done my research and found two notice cleat protecting businesses. The first one is Cleat Stamps, which has a five star rating. And the other one is Exo Star Cleat Covers, which has a three star rating. My competitive advantage is my co customers will buy this, my product over my competitors because it is to fit any type of cleat and you will be able to customize it, the outer band and the bottom sole of my product, which you can add colors or names to. Our target, target market is mainly all of Baldwin County at the moment, hoping to reach all, at least all of Alabama by 2018. I have done some research and found that there are about 1,000 youth soccer players and there is about 10 middle schools in Baldwin County with at least two teams in each school. And there is seven high schools with about four teams in each school. We are targeting all sports. We will also be advertising and making a web page on social media and will be selling online for the start of my business. As you can see, we sell our product for $15, and we use about $8 worth of supplies, so therefore, I make a gross profit of $7. As you, as you can see, we make most of our sales during March and December because we believe they will buy them the most. Because March is very close to when soccer season starts, and December is they may buy the for Christmas presents. Listed are our monthly operating costs. When we add in, in any variable cost, our total operating cost is $74.99. In a month, we will sell an average of 12 units. After factoring in all of our costs, our net monthly profit would be $6.76. In a year, we project selling 144 sleeves our net profit would be $81.09 after accounting for expenses and taxes. <laughs> to start up my business, we need other equipment and fees we have to pay off. As you can see on the chart, all the items to together are the total startup cost is $1,250. We need a total of $1,250. I will be putting in $200 of my own money. My family is also contributing $100. That means we are asking the investors for $950 today. Thank you for your consideration of squeeze. So stay neat with squeeze. I may not have all the answers, but I am, that is not a reason why I should give up and not be able to do what I really want to do. I am positive that this will be a successful business. Again, I am asking for a startup cost of $950. Any questions? Nathan, um, you told the story about getting injured and then walking around at the hospital in the police. So is, is, is this meant to be um, more or less for safety? Uh, you explain it, um, it like you put it on the bottom of your cleat so that like you can just walk around and it without uh, like scratching up the bottom of your cleat or messing up messing it up or wearing the cleats off. Okay, so it was you, you weren't when you're walking on the hospital floors you were you kind of easy on the, on the cleats or yeah I, I had to walk easy because like I couldn't scratch them up because. Also noticed uh, with your with your pricing model, um, how, how did you arrive at fifteen dollars? I noted the, uh, the five star you said was basically thirty five dollars uh, for the wrap around the shoe, and then the, the other cleat, which had a three star rating, was at ten to twelve dollars. So you're, you're sort of in the middle, but uh, your margins are fairly low. So what, what was your reasoning behind fifteen dollars? Um, we kind of did that because. We had kind of a high um, operating cost, so that we wanted to make at least a little bit of a profit.
profit, so that's kind of why we made it a little bit in the middle of it. So, so you were getting the middle of the two top competitors, is that what you were trying to kind of do with the price point? And I'm not an engineer, but I assume all of these are strictly custom. I mean, every size, every <laughs> so every every order has to be unique to each pair of shoes. Um, what are you trying to challenge to make first to fit any type of cleat? There's like the mouth guard material. I wanted to like mold to your feet, so it can just instead of you having to like put in all the work and just make a hole and everything, so you can just mold it straight to your cleat. So it would just. It would be basically a, a universal flat gel and then push it onto the bottom of the shoe. Kind of to, to fresh the mold it too. Okay. 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 Would they have to heat it? Yeah. Um, yeah like the mouth guard? I said it in here, um, you would have to boil the thing, the sleeve to kind of get it warm and then apply some pressure to the cleat to. Truck. Well, we were looking at that, and we found out there's some food truck 
parks that might be opening in Foley and Gulf Shores. We're also looking to local farmers markets. We also discovered that the baked and wrapped are freeze as well, so we're looking into a little uh, retail application. I'm identifying our main competitor as a Southern Soul food truck who has an $8 baked and wrapped meatloaf, which happens to be one of their best selling products. We believe that since we focus on making one main product, we'll be able to produce more baked and wrappers. We'll also be able to sell large portions of the less baked the truck market in Baldwin County hasn't been tapped, but Mobile and Pensacola are booming in this market. That means we'll be providing a service that's rare and the fastest growing county in Alabama. On top of that, most comfort food restaurants focus on the meat and free concept, without serving a true high quality comfort. As we attend local festivals, we'll distribute samples of our menu items to gain valuable customer input on our products and prices. Also deliver samples to construction sites, offices, utility companies, and other large employers who show up food truck. We'll position our truck on an annual calendar of events, festivals, construction sites, and permanent commissary location. We're also working on making a website which will offer catering and takeout, and we'll be building a presence on social media sites to increase exposure to target markets. We'll also send flyers to companies offering meat lovers specials for their in-house events. What employee wouldn't want the boss to bring the bacon raptor? <laughs> One unit is a six ounce portion which is made in a batch of five. All the ingredients together equals $1.24. Here we've, listed, we've listed our fixed monthly operating costs which amounts to $57. The cost for our commercialized kitchen will vary based off of our sales. Here, we've taken the previously listed $1.64, added that to the cost of labor according to Alabama minimum wage, and then subtracted that from the selling price, giving us a gross profit of $3.90. We've only been selling for two weeks, but in that time, we sold 45 units with overwhelmingly positive reviews from customers. Because of this, we're guesstimating that sales will average about 100 per month and will spike up during summer and holidays, such as July 4th, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Here, we've added all units sold to the previous suppliers and found that after cost of goods sold and taxes, we have a net profit of $3,655.04. $70. I'll be putting in $200, as well as my parents. My grandmother's also putting in $100, so I'm asking for $570. Thank you for your consideration of current stores. Again, I'm asking for $570. Feel free to ask any questions you might have. Is this the thing that you brought? 
mentioned specifically that is the creature the creature creature.
cup of sugar, spice, and everything nice. Erin asked for $720, and she was awarded $720.
way that you're working it, like uh, calling it the bacon raptor. Not only is it very clever, but it is actually what you are trying to sell. You're not trying to sell all of the family sides and everything else while they were delicious. That's not what you, what we think you should try to focus on as far as um, if, you're, if you're going to a, an event like um, the, the balloon festival, for instance, like you mentioned, going to places like that, we would suggest that you get with somebody like Ed Bashaw, who ran the uh, Culinary Institute down at Foster State, to work on presentation because once they taste it, they're going to love it. But they, it needs to be set, presented to them such that they want to taste it. Okay, and we think that if you focus on all your presentation, everything about your meat product, the, the, the food truck, and uh, all of the family size, that's a necessary piece of the food truck. It's not a necessary piece of Carnosaurus specifically. Okay, make sense.